This is part three of my review of the Redcat Gen 8 V2. I've had it on the rocks, I've had it on the trails. And I've got to tell you, anyone who owns one of these things already knows what I'm going to say, but this is one excellent rig. Bad things first. If they chipped with a 21 instead of a 17 turn, I think this motor would have been pretty much perfect. As it is, if you look at some of the footage from uh, my trail time with it, it was really hard to control. It would be um, jerking down a hill, or if I was trying to drive next to the Defender with the trailer, the Defender was lovely and smooth, and this thing, I was, I was trying so hard with this remote just to keep it level, but even the tiniest little throttle, the, the steps, this might look a bit like a 1060, but it doesn't behave like on this ESC. The steps that this thing was doing, it was, it was uh, really hard to control the throttle. So what I'd like to see from this thing would be better control. Now you could swap the radio out, you could swap the motor out, and I probably will do both of these things. But I wonder whether just sticking a 1080 ESC in this thing and dropping the punch, um, I think just dropping the punch would make a big difference. Um, it also needs a drag brake. It says it has 100%, uh, that's the setting for the drag brake, but it behaved as, well honestly, it, it behaved as if it didn't have a drag brake. Um, even just being able to do this, I'd be surprised if it was much more resistance than that. If you look at, I've got one shot of this thing going down a hill and I, I show you on the camera where I take my finger off the throttle. This thing still just, is just going down the hill like this. Um, with a drag brake on 100%, a legitimate 100%, it should be at the most kind of like that. Some systems like the uh, Hobbywing Axe, any of those FOC systems, the Fusion as well, which I'm going to get one of soon. Um, th I mean, that can be like that. If it's got traction on the uh, on the ground, it'll just hold. And if you push and crank, you'll get a little bit of movement. That's that's the uh, the Hobbywing's um, brushless, at least the FOC systems. The 1080 goes up to a maximum of 100%, but it's, um, if you look at my, my eight wheel drive jet truck that had the, um, when, it, when you open the thrust right up and you see just a vortex of dust and, and gravel, you see the whole thing just bed down like that. You see the wheels are just kind of skidding forward and it, then it moves a little bit and then it holds. That's the 1080 with eight wheels trying to push this thing forward. The, the thrust from that EDF on that truck was phenomenal. That's what 100% drag brake should look like. This, it was as if, as, as if it had almost none. Now the servo is better than I thought. This is a 25 kilogram Metal Gear waterproof servo. So for an included ready to run 10 scale truck, that's actually pretty good. It is slow, it is definitely slow. That's a slow servo. How strong is it? Yeah, it's all right. We'll see if it fades. But it didn't fade on the rock test. Now, the headline for me is that this thing beat my heavily modified Bronco. That thing's got weight on all the corners. It's running an axe system, so I've got that nice low speed control. There are two approaches you could take to this kind of truck. You could make it really heavy, bulk it right up, and then beef up the power system so you end up with a really heavy truck, but it's got all the bells and whistles. That's my Bronco that you can see in the in the uh, shootout, in the first shootout. This thing, it's it's light. Many ready-to-run vehicles are light. The Sport's going to be light. The SCX10 will be pretty light, I think. When you pull these things out, they are light. And when you start modding them, you add weight, all in the name of getting traction up on the rocks. It does all come with a cost. Your suspension suffers. Um, Particularly if you've got it on sprung weight, if you're adding weight on anything that isn't the axles, you're uh, you're actually lowering your performance. Um, which is why people say put wheel weights in or weight your actual wheels themselves, or you know put brass knuckles in or brass C hubs. I'm actually seriously considering not adding weight to this thing. 
I think the one thing I'm going to do is stick a 1080 in it. We'll fiddle with the programming. I'm even going to leave this 17 turn motor. It's the same motor that the um, Gen 7 had, I think. I'm going to leave it in, even though I don't like it. And we'll see what just an ESC change does. As far as whether I'd choose this or a Bronco, if I could only have one, for a trail truck, I would choose the Bronco. I love having the diffs that I can engage and disengage separately. The, um, I haven't got it nearby, but the, the GT5 is the radio I've stuck in, so you can lock or unlock the front or the rear. You've got um, two speeds as well. So for a trail truck, I think the TRX4 has this bit. But on the rocks, this really surprised me. Um, I love that it's configurable. You've got two mount points for the links. You've got and that's at HM too. You've got um, really plush suspension. You might recall on the on the uh, the first video when I did the initial unboxing, I also did a little bit of tuning. I added some preload. When I was on the trail, I added a bit more preload on this because another thing that disappointed me was it squatted down. It had torque twist. So when you're accelerating, it would it would be driving like that a lot. You'd see it more with the body. You'd, you'd be behind a truck that was like that. I thought portals might decrease that, but they didn't. Having um, opposite spinning drive shafts would have definitely helped. This is not my favorite trail truck. I really like the TRX4 more, but on the rocks, torque twist isn't gonna bother you so much. You can mitigate it by uh, adding some preload on the back left, uh, and maybe, no, that's probably all. I really like this truck in stock form. We're going to change the 1080. That might be the single best thing we do. If you had this truck and you were on a tight budget and there was only one thing you could change, I would say swap the motor, get a 21 or maybe a 27 turn Holmes Trailmaster 550. The 27 if you're going to be doing more rock crawling, the 21 if you're going to be more trailing. It really is too, uh, too flighty like this, it's too, too jumpy. If you had a little bit more money, say three motors worth of money, put a 1080 in. If you have four motors worth of money, put a 1080 in and a 21 turn Holmes Trailmaster or equivalent 550 and you will be happy. Stock tires are really good. I like them. This is halfway to the performance of my competition rig. It did twice as well as my modified Bronco. I will share with you down the track my mods as we go. As far as a rock crawler goes, the Red Cat Gen 8 V2, it's a proper rock crawler. This thing caught me out a bunch, you'll see in my previous videos. I don't know if it's just a, uh, even when you get these things straight, it just, <laughs> it was really hard to, to get this in every time and you'll see a few quite a few scenes where I missed it. But as far as a, um, a trail truck goes, not my favorite truck out of the box. We're gonna, uh, I keep looking up there because I've got the SCX-10 3 Gladiator in a box and I've got the TRX-4 Sport to build. And the HPI Venture. I know that's a few years older, but it's such a nice kit. We're gonna stick that together as well. And there's something special about comparing stock kits, so we're gonna do that. As far as a rock crawling, 110 scale semi basher goes this is a really really good truck buy it you'll love it if you like to only drive trails a trx4 for my money a trx4 defender or the bronco or any any of the uh the vehicles that have the um the engageable diff lock and the two speed gears that's a lot of fun for a trail truck but for a do-it-all rig that's really capable out of the box and for um, less money than a trx4 Red Cat Gen 8 V2, I really like it. This might be the 10th or 12th crawler I've owned. It might be one of my very favorites. I really like this thing. So stay tuned for more. We'll do some little mods to it. We'll start with, we'll start with the 1080 and we might look at a, a uh, slightly higher turn 550. And that might be all I do to it. It might actually outcrawl more things. I'm not sure yet, but I can't wait to find out. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining me for this uh, three part review. It's been really fun getting into this and I can't wait to get some more trucks on the trail soon.
I'll see you next time on RCTNT.